The gentleman yields back, the gentlelady from Alabama. Director Mueller, you just said um, in response to two different lines of questionings that you would refer, uh, as it relates to this um, firing discussion, that I would refer you to the report in the way it was characterized in the report. Importantly, the president never said fire Mueller or in the investigation, um, and one doesn't necessitate the other. And McGahn, in fact, did not resign. He stuck around for a year and a half. On March 24th, Attorney General Barr informed the committee that he had received the special counsel's report, and it was not until April 18th that the Attorney General released the report to Congress and the public. When you submitted your report to the Attorney General, did you deliver a redacted version of the report so that he would be able to release it to Congress and the public without delay, pursuant to his announcement of his intention to do so during his confirmation hearing? I'm not going to engage in discussion about what happened after the uh, production of our uh, report. Had the Attorney General asked you to provide a redacted version of the report? We worked on the redacted versions together. Did um, he ask you for a version where the grand jury material was separated? Not going to get into details. Is it your belief that an unredacted version of the report um, could be released to Congress or the public? That's not in my purview. Um, rule 60 material. Why did you not take a similar action so Congress could view this material? Uh, we had a process uh, that we were uh, uh, operating on with uh, the Attorney General's office. Are you aware of any Attorney General going to court to receive similar permission to unredact uh, 60 material? I'm not aware of that being done. The Attorney General released the special counsel's report with minimal re redactions to the public and an even lesser redacted version to Congress. Did you write the report with the expectation that it would be released publicly? No, we did not have an expectation. We wrote the report uh, understanding that it was uh, uh, demanded by the statute and would go to the Attorney General for uh, further pro uh, further. Uh, re review. And pursuant to the special counsel regulations, who is the only party that must receive the charging decision resulting from the special counsel's investigation? Uh, with regard to the president or generally? No, generally. Uh, Attorney General? At Attorney General Barr's confirmation hearing, he made it clear that he intended to release your report to the public. Do you remember how much of your report had been written at that point? Do not. Um, were there significant changes in tone or substance of the report made after the announcement that the report would be made available to Congress and the public? I can't get into that. During the Senate testimony of Attorney General William Barr, Senate, Senator Kamala Harris asked Mr. Barr um, if he had looked at all the underlying evidence that, that the special counsel's team had gathered. He stated that he had not. So I'm going to ask you, did you personally review all of the underlying evidence gathered in your investigation? Well, to the extent that it came through the special counsel's office, yes. Did any sing single mem member of your team review all the underlying um, evidence gathered uh, during the course of your uh, as has been recited here today, a substantial amount of work was done, whether it be search warrants or... or uh, My point is, is there was no one member of the team that looked at everything. That's what I'm trying to get at. Okay. It's fair to say that in an investigation as comprehensive as yours, um, it's normal that different members uh, of the team would have reviewed different sets of documents, um, and few, if anyone, would have reviewed all of the underlying. Thank you. Yes. How many of the approximately 500 interviews conducted by the special conference did you attend personally? Very few. On March 27, 2019, you wrote a letter to the Attorney General essentially complaining about the media coverage of your report. You wrote, and I quote, the summary letter the department sent to Congress and released to the public late in the afternoon of March 24 did not fully capture the context, nature, and substance of this office work and conclusions. We communicated that concern to the department on the morning of March 25th. There is now public confusion about critical aspects of the result of our investigation. Who wrote that March 27th? letter well uh, I, I, uh, I can't get into who wrote it uh, the internal deliberation but you signed it I, I, what I will say is the letter stands for itself okay why did you write a formal letter since you had already called the Attorney General to express those concerns I can't, I can't get into that internal deliberations did you authorize the letters released to the media or was it leaked <coughs> I have no knowledge on either 
Well, you went nearly two years without a leak. Why was this letter leaked? I, I, well, I, I, I can't get into it. Was this letter written and leaked for the express purpose of attempting to change the narrative about the conclusions of your report? And was anything in Attorney General Barr's letter referred to as principal conclusions time the inaccurate? General, the time of the general lady has expired. The can you answer the question, please? And the question is? Yes, me. you may answer the question. Was anything in Attorney General Barr's letter referred to as the principal conclusions letter dated March 24th inaccurate? Well, I am not going to get into that. Time of the gentlelady has expired. The gentlelady from California.